A very special guest joining us this morning by phone with reaction to the jobs report. Here now in a first on CNBC interview, Texas Congressman and Republican presidential candidate, Ron Paul. Representative Paul Sullivan, thank you very much for joining us. With this jobs number and the revision to January, do you feel there is zero chance, I know there would be zero chance if you were in charge anyway, but zero chance of quantitative easing three from your friends at the Fed? No, uh, there'll be plenty of that. You know, when you keep interest rates at zero percent, essentially, isn't that a bit of quantitative easing? I mean, they have to continue. It's a, it's the policy that has not changed and is not likely to change. And the whole whole concept is wrong. There's a lot of credit out there, but it's being allocated by Congress and the Federal Reserve, and it completely distorts the market when you have when you should be getting capital from savings and allocation of credit from the private sector. So this this is not going to save the economy. This is a temporary reprieve. But I think we're going to continue on this course of uh, structural unemployment. We, we essentially haven't created any jobs since So you're not, C Congressman, you are not encouraged at all by the revision to January and 227,000 jobs created in February. Uh, sure, uh, a little bit, but I see, these, I see these as blips. You know, Wall Street got excited, and they're excited right now because the stock market's back up to 13,000. Well, in April of 07, it was 13,000, and it would have to be at 14,300 to break even. So Wall Street does fine in trading, but what about the person who wants to save and take care of their future? There's no incentive there. There is no so, incentive. So do you is, see the Federal Reserve? This is not real. We've got to be realistic. Congressman, do you see the Federal Reserve then tightening, maybe throwing a little bit of a you know, 50 basis point bone to some of the savers out there by at least trying to inflate interest rates so the savers can get at least a little something for their no, money? Is there any no, chance no of way. Happening? I've asked both Greenspan and Bernanke this question constantly. Why do you make the elderly suffer when they want to save and they want to be frugal? They say, well, that's the price they have to pay. We have to deal with the big picture of seeing how we stimulate the financial markets and they've, they've given me the same answer every time they're not going to they're not going to do that that's the only thing they know is inflating inflating the currency and it's just further distortion okay so, then, so you're uh, not yeah, in favor I wish, of qe3 wrong and I, I wish this were economic growth but i just don't believe it okay you're not in favor of qe3 and there's a reason i'm i'm sort of asking you these questions then i would ask you what would you do right if you're not in favor of qe we know that you don't think the fed is going to raise interest rates i mean maybe you do that what what would you do, Congressman Paul? I would stop all the bailouts. I would let the market set interest rates. I would get people to start saving money again. I would not let the Fed monetize debt. And all of a sudden, the Congress would have to live within their means. Uh, interest rates go up. The only way you could lower interest rates is if the Congress got out of the business of borrowing so much money. So they'd have to cut so, money. So Congressman, my, my proposal is, to, is to cut a trillion dollars out of the budget as a starter. So it sounds like you're in favor of ripping the Band-Aid off, and, and that sounds good on paper, but at the same time, that would probably provoke a severe market reaction. Are you saying that that market reaction is worth it down the road? I mean, that, that immediate well, term no, pain would be I worth it to the financial markets. I think you have to look at the option of continue to do what we're doing. We have a bond bubble, and eventually that will collapse in the market. No matter what the Fed does, it will push interest rates up. So you want to do is save a crisis like what uh, Greece is going through. We have so a bond, you wait, 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 you, dollar, have you have bond bubble. Do that, but I would say uh, keeping this on is a road to disaster. A bond bubble. Are you saying that Treasury securities, U.S. government-issued securities, are in a bubble right now? Oh, absolutely, because they cost so much to get so little. Who, who would invest other than, uh, you know, the insiders and the bankers and the traders? Who, who would invest in a 20-year government bond or 30-year government bond? There's no value in that. So the price is way too high, just as the value of those Greek bonds were way too high, and that's why they're worthless now. Nobody wants them, and nobody wants to let them default. You have to, let the, you have to liquidate the debt, and you've got to get rid of the debt if you ever want economic growth again. Congressman, it's always refreshing to speak to you because you bring to the table a point of view that we don't often hear from people. And that is what a lot of people are saying about what your legacy to this uh, race for the Republican nomination is, and that is the palling of, of the debate, the, the, what you bring and what you demand of the other candidates. A lot of people are already writing you off, and I know that you have vowed to stay in the race, at least for now. But what would be your greatest legacy? What is the issue that you would most like to look back on and say, you know what, I had an impact on the Republican nominee on this issue? Well, I think the the main thing is change the course of where we've been going for, you know, especially the last 40 years, maybe 100 years, and say that freedom is the issue, not big government. 
And that's what has to happen. That's what my campaign is all about. But the next generation, I win all the elections of the people between 18 and 30 because they know what they're getting. They're getting a bad deal. They know about it. They know about the Fed. They're sick and tired of the wars. And uh, they're, they're just tired of it all. And they don't like the intrusion on their personal liberties. Right. So it's the reinstitutionalizing the love of liberty that we need. And uh, that is why we get uh, the support we do. And you've always uh, appealed to the youth voter, but more recently, and I'm thinking of Super Tuesday, it doesn't appear to be the case that you've actually drawn those people in. According to a, a Tufts uh, study that was released this week, the Circle Study, in five Super Tuesday states, you attract no more of the youth vote than Rick Santorum. What is happening to your base? I know your advisors have been out and publicly saying that, you know, the, the out that you see in the rallies, the support that you see among the youth vote is not translating at the polls. Uh -huh. Well, you have to read all the stories about how they count the votes, too, to be fair, because there's, there's a lot of things going on. We can put 4,000 people yeah. in a precinct and come up with 2,000 votes, and we, we actually know where our votes are. So we have a lot of things to contend with, not only the philosophy and the, and the challenge to the status quo, but we also have to challenge the system that can't bear the thought that we would get a lot of credit for what we're doing. Well, Congressman Paul, listen, it's been a very serious interview. I, I do want to leave you with this and maybe a little bit of good news on a Friday. Melissa, I don't know if okay. you read this, Congressman. There's a giant asteroid headed our way. Seriously, 2040, it could be here. So all this stuff, we may not have to worry about it anymore. No, yeah, there, there, there you go. I don't worry about tomorrow. You know, uh, tomorrow will take care of itself. But if we continue to do what we're doing, we better worry about the asteroid. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, Congressman Paul. Thank you. We'll try to get a little.